So in the last lecture, I talked about how to declare arrays of different lengths and different types. And there are three different ways to declare an array. These two will initialize the values to zero for an int array, for example. And this will actually declare and set the values for that array. You can also declare arrays of doubles, strings, and booleans. Then I showed you different ways to populate the array. So here I hard-coded the values 1 to 10, but I could also write a loop to do that. So if I want the values 1 to 10 in this array, just like this, with the 0 index or location having a 1, the 1 index having a 2, I can use a simple for loop to do that. So when i is 0, the loop will substitute a 0 in here, and it will say 0 plus 1 is 1, so I will get a 1 in the 0 element. Then i becomes 1, it will substitute a 1 here, and 1 plus 1 is 2, so it will assign 2 to the second item in the array, which of course is index number 1 because we have a 0 offset. Now if you wanted to assign numbers randomly to the array, you would simply set up your random number generator, and if I want the numbers from 1 to 10, just like up here, to be assigned to the array but in random order, and I might get duplicates and that's fine, I can use a random number generator. So uh, the first index of 0 will get a number between 1 and 10, inclusive and then the next one will get a number and the next and the next and they will be not necessarily in ascending order they'll be in a random order and again there might be duplicates but that's okay if we're using a random number generator and hopefully that gets you to thinking about the alternating sums where I mentioned you could populate the array using a random number generator so again different ways to populate the array you can hard code it you can use a for loop you can use a random number generator in a for loop. You could use scanner and have somebody enter the values in a loop into the array. So now we know in alternating sums we want to add the first and the second number, subtract the third, and so on. Um, so let's think about how we can sum up numbers in an array. If I wanted to start at the zero index number which is the first item in the array and I wanted to add the value in this one which is 1 and I wanted to skip the one that has the index of 1 and I wanted to go to the one with the index of 2 which is technically the third item in the array and I wanted to add that so that I have 1 plus 3 is 4 then I wanted to skip this one and go to this one and add that so that I had 4 plus 5 is 9. And then I wanted to skip 5 and go to 6 and add that. Skip 7, go to 8 and add that. I can do that with a for loop. I start i at 0. I loop as long as i is less than or equal to the last index number, which in this case 10 minus 1 is 9. And then I add 2 to i, so I will go 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and I will just add those values up, skipping every other one. If I wanted to start with, with 1 instead and add this one and skip the next one and then add this one and skip one and add this one and skip one and add the next one, very similar thing with the for loop. I'm still going to add 2 to i each time, so I go 1, 3, 5, 7, but I'm going to start with 1. I'm going to skip the 0 element. This stays the same, so I can loop through every item in the array, and then I can have a variable where I just accumulate my sum. All right. If I, for some reason, forget how many items are in my array, if I don't know how many, for example, I have the user entering that via scanner, right? 
and I don't want to go and look back at the variable where I have that, there is a characteristic of any array, and you can use it wherever you want, and it's called length. Notice there are no parentheses after the word length. This is not a method, which we'll see with the array list class. There's an, a method that we can use to determine how many items are in an array list. But with an array, if I want to see how many items total count are in that array, and I don't want to scroll back up and look at my angle brackets, if I don't want to do that, I can use the characteristic of the array, and it's the array name dot length. Again, notice no parentheses. This isn't a method, it's just a characteristic. If it were a method, like we'll see with the array list, we would have parentheses, we'd have, it'd actually be called size paren paren. So nums.length will give me 10 for the nums array because that is the number I put into the angle brackets when I declared it. I created it to have 10 total items, so nums.length will print out 10. So where this might really help you is more in a situation like this where I, I didn't count how many there were but I need to know the total count. I could use another dot length in a print line and figure that out. But where that really comes in handy is in the for loop. So if I know that dot length specifies the total number of items in the array, I can use that in my loop condition. I can say I less than nums dot length, because remember that's going to be 10 in my case because I declared it to hold 10 integers but my zero offset means I go 0 to 9 on my index numbers so on a loop as long as I is less than nums.length which would be 10 and I'm just showing you here how you could do that in a for loop if you accidentally put less than equals it will try to access nums bracket 10 which doesn't exist because that would technically be the 11th element and you would get an array index out of bounds error similar to this when you run it. Okay, so again I'm just showing you here this is a bad line of code because again the highest element number is 9 not 10. Notice I don't get an error here, I get the error when I run it. It throws an exception, array index out of bounds, letting me know that, hey, you went one too many beyond the size or the length of the total count of the array. The other thing I want to remind you, you cannot use a concat. If you want to do anything with an array, you've got to use the plus sign in this case because this is an array of integers and concat would work if it was an array of strings, but it will not work with anything else. All right, so the next assignment is to write a program that takes the first number and adds it to the second, subtracts the third, and so on, alternating, adding, and subtracting. And so I think the write-up's a little misleading because I think I said you're adding evens and subtracting odds. Well, when you start dealing with an array, what do I mean by evens? This is the second item second being an even number, but its index is 1, which is an odd number. This is the third item, which is an odd number, being the third item, but it has an index of 2, which is an even number. So I should have done that write up a little differently and not thrown or used the terms odd and even, because when we start dealing with arrays with the zero offset, what exactly do I mean? So really what I'm saying is take the first two and add them, and then subtract the next and then alternate adding and subtracting for each subsequent item and that's really how I should have phrased it. So if I want to do that there are a couple of ways I can do it. But the bottom line is I'm going to have to cycle through every item in the array and I'm going to have to use some if logic here. So really, if i is 0 or i is 1, 
I want to add those first two items together. So literally what I'm saying is, okay, take the first item when I is zero and add it to this accumulating variable summit. Loop again, I is one, okay? Is I one, add that to summit. And that's how I get my first two numbers added together. So it's not enough to do the for loop. It's not enough to try to figure out evens and odds. That's really not gonna help you to add the first two. You're really going to have to put some type of an if similar to this in there. If it's anything else, right, if I'm not at the zero or the one, if I'm not at the first or second element, this is where I've got to figure out adding or subtracting. Now some people will take this a step further and if it's a 3 or a 5 and they'll keep doing that. If it's 0, 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9, add it. Oops, and I forgot I should have put that in there. So some people will do that and then they'll do an else, right? and they'll subtract the other items. That is one way you could do it, which that works if you know how many total items you have. But say you don't know, maybe you have 20 one time and five the next time and 13 the next time. That doesn't quite work so well. This is where we can say, okay, we're going to subtract this number and then we're going to subtract this one and this one and this one. So we're going to subtract every other one. And in this case, we can say that the index numbers of the items that we're subtracting do happen to all be even because we're skipping every other one after this one. Okay, we're subtracting every other one from that point on. So we could say if I, our counter, right, divided by 2 has a remainder of 0, that means it must be e an even index number. It must be this one, or it must be this one, or it must be this one, or it must be that one. Because it's going to take I, when I is 2, it's going to divide it by 2, it's going to see yes, the remainder is 0. And we can say that those are the ones we need to subtract. So I could say the pattern is wherever the I, the index number, is even, go ahead and subtract. Otherwise, must be time to add. So that is one approach that you could use. So I've got a for loop, and in my for loop I have an if else, and then I have a nested if else inside this outer driving if else. Now what some people will do is they will have two loops. They'll write a loop that adds up the numbers that go zero and one and then they'll add up three five seven etc and then they'll have a second loop that subtracts out the two four six eight similar to uh, what I was doing here with these two different loops so some people will write one loop that adds all the uh, zero one three five seven numbers up and one loop that subtracts out the two four six eight um, so you can do that as well. Two different approaches and there's even, there's still other ways to do this exercise. But I showed you what I think is probably the best way to do it up here 
um, to use ifs within a loop.